Okay. Yeah. Um, I will trim this video later. So what's up, guys? I am going to try and live stream this, but I've been trying to do a video about how I mix and master my fingerstyle guitar. Um, I also do percussive guitar, so I'm not going to do any percussive guitar for this video. I just have a little uh, Dorian Celtic sounding tune I just filmed, and I'm going to upload a little YouTube short with it. But um, I have been mixing and mastering for several years, um, and I'm not a professional by any means, but you know I have picked up some experience and I just want to talk about mixing and mastering so we're gonna get into this um, okay so I use Fruity Loop Studio to mix and master all of my music I actually use Reaper Studio to record audio tracks because Edison where's Edison this is this right here is not actually that great for recording audio um er, or let me let me reword that it's not that great for full tracks or if you're trying to get like nice crisp acoustic it just kind of digitizes the sound um, obviously it's great for like a vocal sample or maybe recording you know your own music whatever but you know for like I've tried to do full-on you know eight minute one takes and it like clips and stuff and just like I said it makes it sound kind of digital so I actually bought Reaper Studio for only 60 bucks um, and that works great it's like audacity except it's a little more advanced I would say Reaper's amazing it's a full-on DAW that actually I think in its rawest price it's like thirteen hundred dollars but if you're using it just for yourself they uh, have a, a license for it that only costs sixty dollars so that's awesome um, anyways, to move on though, once I get it recorded in Reaper Studio, I then render it, and then I put the tracks in Fruity Loops, and I already kind of started doing this, but yeah, I, I, I put the tracks in the mixer, and the way I raise the volume, because I don't really do anything, I don't compress or any of that, I kind of just mix, I just re render the raw stems from Reaper into Fruity Loops, and I, this is what I do for the volume, so I'll just like, you know, I just connect it from one track to the next track to the next track, and I keep putting up the volume until it goes all the way up like that. So, anyways, if you want to hear this Ross mix, this is it. okay. So there's a lot to mix here. I'm also using a different guitar because my my primary guitar, if you see me on YouTube with my Seagull, I still have it. But it's just getting hard to play. I need to take it to a luthier. So um, I'm actually using a different guitar. <clears throat> I'm using a Michael Kelly uh, little-ish guitar. And it's actually not the greatest guitar for fast playing or, you know, advanced finger style. I just realized, like, some guitars that are cheaper, they, they just uh, are hard to get nice and crisp, clean notes. Um, not every cheap guitar. Actually, oftentimes you'll find a cheaper guitar, even like a $300 guitar that plays as good as a two thousand dollar guitar i just i noticed that um but in this case this is a little higher but i got this little thing going on so with this michael kelly it's good enough so first thing i do is okay i use two wide diaphragm condenser mics i actually have a pair of road nt1s and i love them they're only like 250 bucks and they have a reputation going on that for you know a two hundred three hundred dollar mic they sound like thousand dollar mics they are amazing before i used rode nt1s i had a pair of rode nt5 mini condenser mics and both of those condenser mics sound both of the, the both of the mini condenser mics sound not as good as one rode nt1 so i would say if you're looking for something to get with a budget get a rode nt1 they are great for all around recording but I'm not going to go too much into hardware and stuff. I just wanted to shout that out. Um, you know, most people, most people in guitar though, they do mix, they do use a pair of mini condenser mics to record and that's the ideal thing, but you have to get really expensive mics. Um, I actually want to get a KM 184. Everyone says that that is the mini condenser mic you want to get to professionally record, but it's $800 for just one. So I was going to get it, but, um, just life happens and stuff, and I haven't gotten it yet. Um, but I'm really content with these Rode NT1s. And then I'm using the pickup that came with the Michael Kelly when I bought it, which this is the worst one, uh, the worst recording. It has all of that white noise. 
Oh no, wait, sorry. This is not the Michael Kelly. This is the Shure SM57. I use yeah, that's also a cheap mic. Um, but I use that and I usually use this mic as a pad mic because it's the worst thing I use to record when I record my Seagull. But with my Michael Kelly, uh, the pickup just has tons of white noise. So, um, anyways, lots and lots of white noise. So, yeah, anyways, I'm, I always start off with the worst mic and I mix that. So since this is my pad mic, this is uh, what I do with my pad mic a pad is something that's like a background it's not something you necessarily notice so um i take parametric eq and um i get rid of all of that all of the frequencies where there's all that white noise and whistling and stuff so So I just did that, um, and I'm actually going to do a second parametric EQ and just do a little more. So you can see it's really just the low frequencies, low to mid, and I mean some of the higher I mean, melodies, but all of that, all of this stuff gone doesn't even matter um and then here's my my uh if i have a producer's secret ooh -hoo, this is my producer's secret um for pad mics i'm sure this is done more often than i realize but um anyways i take reverb and i just do pure reverb i get i, I put all the wet up and i put the actual dry like basically you know the pre-reverb or whatever you want to call it you know the the raw sound i usually turn that all the way down so let me just show you really quick what I mean so and that's pretty much like what I do with the pad and that just adds so much flavor I noticed when I finally did that for the first time people were commenting on that YouTube video which I believe that was I think that was Final Fantasy VIII's cover of Breezy, I did that. And people commented and was like, wow, this sounds so crisp and clean. And I knew that was one of the things I did. Oh, I actually forgot. I do one more step, usually before I do the reverb. I take a compressor and I just mercilessly compress it. Like, I make dubstep kids look good with how bad I compress this. Like, I'll put the threshold all, just all, like, just terribly, just, you know, that hard compression. Yeah, that's, yeah hard compression. Yeah, um, maybe put that up a little bit because that prevents stuff um there we go so that's what i do and that's pretty much the finished product of what i do with this I'll, I'll go back to the eq and stuff later on but long story short that's basically what i do uh with this let me save this file really quick oh i already saved it okay i thought i didn't not save it at all so anyways cool so there's that then the next thing i do um like I said, usually, you know, with my seagull, I have a, usually I do the, I do this pad thing to my uh, Shure SM57, but since the Shure SM57 isn't the worst recording tool I have for my finger style guitar, um, I'm going to mix this now, I suppose. Um, anyways, so I'm not gonna do much, because honestly what I, what I notice is less is more. You know, you don't want to add all those crazy effects. I, I finally am really, I finally really started to see that, you know, the more effects you add, the more you try and EQ, the more it just starts to not sound, well, it doesn't sound acoustic, it doesn't sound natural. So, minimal, but, you know, this definitely does have, like, some white noise. So, we'll just bring that down a bit. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> Sorry, I did. 
did not edit my video at all, so now I'm doing that, like, changing the title, I'm not making breakcore, I'm making things a little bit better. Alright. Sorry, I should have done this, but, you know, it's like, oh well. Um. I'm so sorry for this. Uh, oh well. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm almost done. Just a couple more tags. <laughs> okay, no, I'm done. Back to mixing. So yeah, this is my Shure SM57, which is, if you don't know, that's like a $100 mic. It's one of the go-to mics. Everyone goes to the Shure SM57 and the Shure SM58. Um, yeah, I will compress this. Not too much, though. Definitely put it on soft compression. Um, probably turn up not really much gain. Okay, now here's just a basic thing, you know, for stereo mixing. When you have a pair of mics, you stereo mix them. You pan one to the left, pan one to the right. Okay, and these are both the same mic. They're both Rode NT1As. Um, and this is, you know, just like I always start off doing this, but it doesn't mean I necessarily end it. And I'll show you another guitar project. I'm going to show you probably 10,000 reasons because that mix was naturally well. The recordings were naturally well. Um, one of the things that makes your guitar mix good is mic placements and i'm not super strict on mic placements but i have seen like it's devastating um depending on how well your mics are placed for this honestly my mics were not i just kind of just clobbered them together i didn't even care um because more than less you'll still be able to get a good mix out of it if it's really bad to where you need to redo it well dang but i'm not trying to be like super strict but if you are trying to get professional recording, then, I mean, go for it. You you would want to do that. But uh, you can get, quote, I can get, quote, unquote, professional. I don't know if you want to quote me on that. But, you know, I could get adequate recordings, typically, like, just about every time. But I've had some bad projects before. Um, Still had to work through it, and I just did. So, anyways, let me just show you this really quick. If you, if you are, if you don't even know about this, um... So here's the mics, and I'll just pan them. Actually, we'll do, we'll put this in mono, and then I'll slowly. Okay. So yeah, I mean that's just that's just an effect, right? And like I said, that's just a basic fundamental um, that people do. So I'm actually gonna just start this in stereo, and I'm gonna mix since we went from right to left. I'm just gonna go with this mic. On my Seagull, I have my I have a KNK Trinity pickup, which is like a hundred seventy dollar pickup and that I installed into it, and it's very very bright. So I have no problem with, you know, pure low ends. 
Actually, as a matter of fact, sometimes I have to take out the high ends in my K&K Trinity and even add some of the referencing of the wide diaphragm condenser mics. I don't know if that makes any sense, so I just won't say any more than that. More, I won't say any more on that, but yeah, anyways. So <laughs> fast song so you really want the legato and staccato going on right <laughs> um, even though they're wide diaphragm condenser mics they're kind of you kind of want the low ends but whatever going around second i have to turn up my volume a little bit i have to adjust these knobs just a little bit actually no i can't really do that never mind um oh my gosh am i talking soft whoops i'm gonna turn up my mic i'm so sorry actually no i'm gonna turn it back down and edit this if i can i probably can't oh well i hope you can still hear me well um let me just see my volumes really quick okay oh well well all right i turn up my mic a little bit What's up, Kisker? All right. Um. Okay, let's just hear this. Okay, that's nice and atmospheric. Definitely, it's definitely, you know, it's, I mean, it's not bad. It's just not, it's not apparent. You know what I mean? So I want it to be brighter, more attention getting. Definitely gonna turn down these mics um, and this pad. Okay. There, much better. Much better. actually going to add a little bus for those two mics for the effects. So I'm just going to put that, uh, let's just route it to here and just do that. No, yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. There, that'll, that's an, enough for me to be like, yeah, that's the bus. We're going to put that on one if we can. Well, come on. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, cool. Okay, let me just get rid of Well, I'm not, I, I sometimes worry about phase, you know, like moving these, but not today. Maybe, we'll, we'll see. Definitely could use some reverb. All right, so. I like that. Yeah, like I've, and I think this is just a common thing. Like re, like a lot of reverb just makes everyone happy. Like it does, but.
noticed, but I'm just experimenting. So that's basically like, you know, the go to, you know, that's kind of the algorithms. If I, if I have a few, you know, especially like like that little producer secret ooh -hoo, that I have with, you, you know, making the pad mic. <laughs> Other than that, you know, everything else is kind of by ear, literally. So um, let's go to what was it? Ten, ten thousand reasons. This project, I'm just going to go to this and show you um, what I did for this. This is a very pure mix. Okay, that's another thing. I add filters so that the so that there's not like excessive noise at the beginning as well as the end. Um, sometimes I add several filters, but this one I only have one, and I don't even know what it's for. It's for whatever that is. I don't know. Let's find out. I don't know. Maybe it's for something on the master. I don't know. I don't care. But you can see, so, okay. Oh, and I actually organized this a little bit. So, yeah, there's the anteed one. There's the other anteed one. And I stereo mixed them. I actually ended up having those stereo mixed. Like I said, oftentimes I don't. Sometimes I'll stereo mix, like, one road anteed one with, like, the pickup. And I actually put the, my KNK Trinity on my Seagull a little bit to the right. There's my Shure SM57, which is usually the pad. You can see it's very low, but it's there, right? Okay, so. Okay, here's my, here's my, uh, let me just see. Oh, and I have compressor and reverb, and I tried to flanger on it apparently, but yeah, I, like flanging is something I was, I was more obsessed about a few years ago. Now I don't care too much for specifically a flanger. Um, anyways. What else is there? Yeah, okay, so here's my KNK Trinity. And th like I said, this is super bright. Like it, that's just, wow, you know. Look at that. It's that bright even while I took the high ends, like, super down. I mean, that's just brutally bright. And Seagulls are not known to be bright guitars. They're known to be very full, but they have a lot of low ends. They're very good for percussive guitar, which is why I bought one. Especially for like a four hundred fifty dollar, five hundred dollar guitar, they're they're really superb. Um, my only complaints with Seagulls is they're really fragile. Um, like, I mean, they're not super fragile, but they're definitely significantly more fragile than the average guitar. So if you're like me and you don't take good care of your instruments, I mean, I need a guitar that can take a beating a little bit. I do, you know. Um. It's just my lifestyle, man. So anyways, and then here's my my wide diaphragm condenser mics. Um, pretty. Did I do any... I, I'm surprised if I didn't, because sometimes I'll do that popular EQ trick where... Oh, I did it once right here. Okay. So this whole thing, this whole idea right here with, uh, so this is with this one row down T1. We'll just put this in stereo or, you know, in middle. Um, so turn this up a little bit. Let me show you what this does. Son of a dad. Where are we? Okay. So. So this like this is this is the idea of like being able to get your guitar recordings sounding really smooth, especially if you have minimal equipment. This is a very popular thing to do, but this is just a popular thing to do everywhere. I see, I see mixers, especially guitar uh, producers, do this all the time for like finger style and uh, just acoustic. Um, so, anyways, you take this and you put it really high up, and you'll hear ringing and whistling, and you go up and down. And you hear these these whistles, these ranges. You just hear these whistles, and you know you you try and get the center of a range, right? Like one, you know, ones that are like really loud and like always, no matter what note or chord you're playing, like it's just always there, right? And so like apparently, I found one here. Yeah, right here. And yeah, that's just like 
unnecessarily there. But sorry. But yeah, no. So you take that and you just lower the gain on that one EQ, you know. You don't have it wide, you have it nice and tight like that, okay? And you, sub you subtract it. That way it just makes your your audio track more clear, more crystal and um, you'll see people do this. They'll do it several times even. I mean, they'll do it quite a quite a bit of times, but you know, usually at least a few times and I would say I, I mean, I don't know. Usually say about several times in like one EQ, you know, they'll they'll do that for a guitar track just to make it nice and clean. Um, I don't focus on it too much, but I do focus on it from time to time. And, you know, depending, this is also another thing of like, if I had bad, bad mic placements, then I will do it more. If I have really crystal clean mic placements, I won't. And like I said, for 10,000 reasons, I, this was the, I didn't even try, but it was the best mic placement I'd ever got. Literally just the way the mic sounded automatically with no effects. It was just phenomenal. I was like, do I even need to mix this? I honestly didn't need to mix it. I could have just like, like I could have just done a little bit of stereo mixing and it would have been great. And did I do any phasing? Um, yeah, I did that. I did one little phase thing right there. Okay. You know, and that helps make things sound clear and stuff. Let me just show you that really quick. So we take like this and this. But you see how it sounds? You see how it sounds different? So. And that makes sense on why I chose that one. Though, I do like this one here too. Whatever. So basically, yeah, no, that's all I have. That's all I really have to say. I'm sorry if this video was disappointing. I just I did want to get that out just to have it out. Be like, yeah, I do have a mixing reference of this is how I mix fingerstyle. Oh, I add a little soft clipper. I don't always use those. Did I use a? Did I, I did not use a Maximus at all. Did I? Nope. Um, maybe I did. Sometimes I use Maximus, uh, which is a multi-band compressor. Um, I also use a, this thing called a Stereo Shaper, and I don't think I have it here anywhere. I And I I think I kind of stopped using it for fingerstyle guitar because it, it can sound – it can just kind of clog up the sound. It gets rid of the clarity. So, But let me just show you. Eh, whatever. I won't. But – it's honestly a similar thing you can do. You can actually do the same thing with panning and doing this little face stuff. And it'll, it's base. It's virtually the same thing. Um, but yeah, no, that's about really all I have to to say. Um, I would mix. I would finish mixing um, my little Dorian tune, but that's gonna take a while. And usually, what I also do this is the last thing I'll say. Um, usually, I'll get like a nice draft of a mix going on and then I'll go back to it later on and I'll have a fresh pair of ears because if I just try and mix it in one go I'll my ears will just play tricks on me and stuff and then when I go back to it I'll be like oh this sounds really good or oh this sounds really terrible and so that's kind of what's going on um see I already like just from just a few minutes of not hearing this now I'm like oh no this reverb is just no, it's amateur. It's just bad. I mean, it's not, I don't want to say it's amateur, but it's just, to me, I'm just like, uh, it doesn't really paint the picture too well. You know, I use too much of that effect. So, you know, and also I'm, I'm mixing this a little softer than I usually do specifically because, um, I don't want too much feedback. More reverb equals happy. Yeah, it does. Kisker, I just saw your comment. Okay. But, um, yeah, no, what else, what else do I have to say? Um, I think that's about it. I feel like I'm missing something. What was I talking about just before I checked the comments? Well, Kisker, thank you for watching my live stream and you're, uh, yeah, you're the, you're the highlight of the show. Um, I think that's about all I have to say. But yeah, okay.
that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. And like I said, I'm just going to go back to this later on with a fresh pair of ears and then remix it. And yeah, if you want to hear and see the video, I'm just making a little YouTube short. But if you want to see that, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And um, yeah, thank you. And if you want any more uh, tutorials or anything, you know, um, I also do electronic music and such. 